Hello everyone, um, I think we're live now. Uh, my name is Grandmaster David Howell. Thank you to everyone who's been waiting uh, to play me in the Banter Blitz. It's been a very fun day in the Magnus Invitational. I was watching all the games live. They only finished uh, not too long ago. And yeah, it's, it's really flattering that a lot of you have been waiting and challenging me. In the meantime, I'll try and get through as many of you as I can. Uh, yeah, let's dive straight into the chess. So for those of you who haven't um, seen me do one of these before, if you, I mean, you have to be a premium member on Chess24. So many perks that go with that. But if you are, then you can challenge me up there on Kingsmead, K-I-N-G-S-M-E-A-D. And I'll be accepting three-minute challenges or five-minute challenges, um, a bit of both. And let's try someone who's been waiting a long time. Okay, let's do this. I'm a bit nervous. I mean, a couple of people have mentioned now that my rating's pretty high on Chess24, and I definitely don't deserve it. So... It's got to go wrong sometime. I've got I'm very lucky on the last couple of uh, banter blitz sessions. Um, okay, I'll start with the French defence. Um, yeah, any opening requests, feel free to throw them in as we go along. Uh, I'll be following the Chess24 chat. Um, okay, what's a good move here? F6. C4. C4 is uh, probably a good move, but it blocks things up and not my favourite way to play in blitz. Okay, let's play nice c6. Bishop b5, maybe c4 is a good move. Now I'll play c4 with the idea of maybe a5 or f6. And this bishop doesn't have the d3 square. It's a very similar line in the Slav with reverse colors in this one. Uh, a4 is a good move so that he can meet a5 with b5. Play on the other side now. Um, <laughs> okay, so I'll try and keep an eye on the chat as well. I've got another screen up, especially for this. Apparently, Miktal um, nearly beat me once, and he's <laughs> shared a YouTube link there. Um, not sure whether I'm brave enough to click on it. Um, okay, e takes f6. That's a strange one. Um, I've got, okay, g takes is probably positionally desirable, but I'll take with the knight. Maybe bishop f4 here to stop me putting my bishop on d6. He plays it. Um, okay, let's just get developed. I could play knight e4, but I'm not sure there's any rush. <clears throat> I say that and then he plays knight e5. So. Okay, let's just get developed. Everything's defended for now. And he hasn't castled yet. Um, so yeah, hello to everyone. Hello to Topper Harley. You've been here a few times, I think. Hello to um, Rihan Shah. Rihan Shah, I think you've been waiting the longest, so I'll try and, I'll try and play you at some point. Um, Thunder Panda, nice to see you again. Johnny Walker, that's right. Um, three minute and five minute challenges won't be playing any bullet today, unfortunately. My touchpad won't be able to take it. Um, Bogdan Gamatia, uh, flipboard. Um, I'm not sure I can, if I flip the board, I don't think it will change too much for you guys. Um, okay. okay, so it's all flipped. Yeah, I'm a minute behind in the chat, so hopefully you guys can all see everything now. Um, Queen G4, okay. He's asking for trouble. Look at that king on e1. Um, oof, do I play e5? Do I play knight takes d4? Knight takes b4? Rook takes f4. Ah, uh, how to punish this. So e5, he can maybe take on d7. It's not clear. Knight takes d4, cd4, bishop b4. Hmm. Yeah, this is, I mean, it feels like white should be punished here somehow, but I don't really see it. Yeah, knight d4, cd4, queen d4, queen e6. Okay, I'm going to pretend I'm feeling brave. I mean, I, I could play rook f6 there or something if I was feeling safer, but I'm in a risky move. It's Friday night, time to party, knight takes d4. Oh, Pre-moves, queen takes d4 as well. Um, bishop takes b4 is possible, but I didn't want to give him a chance to play bishop d2. Defend the d4 pawn. Um, Cthulhu, question about Carlson's bizarre uh, play against Ding. Um, yeah, I think you'll find out more about his real strength, his real openings tomorrow when they play each other and the, uh, they play each other again in the semi-finals. Yeah, I mean, we've all had days like that, like Magnus did, where we're feeling fruity and we want to mix things up and try out a novelty on move three. We all want to push Harry up the uh, Harry the H pawn up the board as well. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure what to what conclusions to draw from Magnus's play. 
um, I think yesterday. Uh, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see the rematch tomorrow. He'll be yeah, he'll be thirsting for blood. So okay, my opponent plays bishop e2. Now I have a choice: do I take f4? Do I take a1? Hmm. I do have two pieces hanging as well. Bishop takes b4 is also on the cards. Okay, let's take b4 check. Um, so if he plays something to d2, then at least I might be able to take on a1 with check. Yeah, I, I wasn't ready for such a, an interesting game. Normally I start off slow and warm up. Okay, King f1, let's take this guy everything checkmate. His rook is also hanging on a1. Yeah, this is like the dream in the French. You somehow get rid of that bishop, that light square bishop, and then the center kind of explodes. And often if that happens, it does favor black. Queen e3, yeah, unfortunately that doesn't defend against the checkmate threat because his f1 is pinned now. Can't recapture. So thank you, Aquidamo, for the game. Um, okay, let's race through them. Race through the challenges. So, okay, the guy I wanted to play actually, who's been waiting the longest, seems to have disappeared. What's happened there? Okay, let's accept a random um, challenge. That's a lot of you guys waiting already, which is good. Um, okay, opening suggestions. None of them have come through, right? Yeah. So okay, I'll play the English because I'm very patriotic. <laughs> I actually do have a tendency in first rounds of tournaments to play the English or international tournaments uh, just because I feel I should. Um, especially when playing for England in like the Olympiads and things, I just think, okay, I can't choose my first move unless I have some silly reason for it. And I'm not as brave as Magnus trying everything, so I'll just stick to the English. Okay, so Hufi and Chateau's early. G3 is a solid system here for white. D4, I guess, or E4. Okay, let's play D4. He might uh, set up in some kind of um, hedgehog. That's normally Black's goal with this setup. So some kind of e6, d6, a6. Uh, why c6? Okay. I guess I'll occupy the center. Why not? Okay, so questions in the chat. Cthulhu, <laughs> thanks for mentioning my video course. Uh, yeah, I, I'll try not to plug it too much this show, but I have just released a video course with Ginger GM. Um, it's kind of about my journey. Um, I used to be 2700 and it's talking about how I got there and um, how I taught myself. Um, I mean, I've been self-taught since I was about 11, uh, 11, 12 years old. So it's just the tips and tricks to um, kind of help along your journey. And I've actually had some very nice comments about it so far. Um, a few people have said it's helped them in their games already, which is a nice thing to hear. Uh, but yeah, it's it's 16 hours long, so uh, they're all split up in each chapter is just 15 minutes though. So if you're busy, if you're keeping yourself uh, yourself busy during this lockdown, then hopefully those small 15 minute chunks will be well, will make it more manageable. Um, yeah, a lot of my own games in there, but also a lot of games that I learned from um, some stories about when I played the top guys and. Um, yeah, hopefully something for everyone. There's a lot of my own losses there. So if you're not uh, too tired of seeing my losses today in this Bantam Blitz, then feel free to go and check out that video course. Uh, yeah, a lot of love went into it. So I'll mention it now and I'll try not to mention it again too much. Um, yeah, so Fish One, uh, the ban yeah, so you can challenge me if you're a premium member. Um, Topa Harley, you want me to play the Karakhan? It's a good opening. I, I will save it for a bit later, maybe. Um, Thulu, which part of England do I hail from? I can let you guys guess in the chat if you want. From my accent, you might be able to tell. Um, I'm not a northerner. I'm not from East London, like Lawrence Trent. Um, okay, A6. I don't really want to put my knight on A3, but I also don't really want to exchange and let him exchange knights with knight D4. Mm. Okay, I'll go back this way. Knights on the rim are dim, but we'll see. Um, yeah, I'm not from West London, although I used to live there for a couple of years. Uh, I'm from the south coast of England, so the south east coast, down in Sussex, if you guys know uh, the county, near Brighton. Um, yeah, I live in uh, the town next to mine, they call it uh, God's Waiting Room. I think I'm probably, <laughs> I'm not getting any younger, but I'm still one of the older, uh, still one of the younger uh, inhabitants here, so uh, mildly interested. I'm not a cricket fan. Uh, you guys, I mean, Chess24 fans, you have Peter's Fiddler to talk about cricket. It's not my area of expertise. 
Um, rook d8, okay. This does allow a tactic, quite a thematic one, which I'm going to try. I'm not sure whether it's good here or not. Knight d5, attacking his queen, maybe attacking his bishop. If he takes me, I'll take the c-pawn. Open up that c-file. Okay, he doesn't, so now I have a choice. I can take on b6 or e7. Oof. I don't know. Um, it says my opponent's disconnected. Hopefully that's not true. Um, I'll take on e7 just because I have a love of the bishop pair. And now I'll just attack his weak d6 pawn. Although, actually, maybe I'm not doing so well here after knight c5. Maybe I should have played b4 at some point. Now knight c5, he plays queen a8. I thought I could just play queen c2 and then kick him back, but queen a8. Mm. Oh. I will warm up, hopefully. Uh, knight c5, I don't really want to take it because he takes with the d pawn, most likely. Now I've taken away a square from my knight, though. I'm hoping I get time for knight b1, knight c3, and then I'm in control, but I don't think I will. Yeah, I think my opponent's uh, at least equalized now if he finds queen to a8. Um, yeah, fish one, that's right. Uh, I live very near Eastbourne um, in Sussex. Ooh, f5, pretty. Um, yeah, I can't really afford to take that guy. It's a very good move. Um, yeah, if I had time for knight b1, knight c3, I'd be better, but now it's not clear at all. Might well be worse. We're both running short of time, so prepare to see my touchpad flagging skills. Especially now I've dropped the pawn on f4. <clears throat> Queen takes f4, I'll play rookie one. Pretend it was part of the plan. My opponent's playing a bit slowly, though. Um, okay, I think I can take this. Um, I'll probably move queen takes e4. Now I learned to, oh, I think that does drop a piece, unfortunately, for black. I have learned a lot from watching Hikaru's uh, flagging skills over the years, playing online blitz. So. Okay, no, thank you for the game, uh, Svalbard. So underrated. Okay, new challenge. Sunday duck. It's not Sunday, but I'll give you a shot. Um, yeah, so for those asking, I am, lots of guesses actually there. I'm not from Weymouth, I'm not from East Anglia. I'm from near Eastbourne. I went to school in Eastbourne my whole life. And I support Brighton and Hove Albion, my local team. Um, okay, looks like my opponent might not be there. Sunday Duck, where are you? Okay, 10 more seconds. Um, yeah, that's right. There's an Essex, there's a Wessex, and there's a Nosex. Uh, story of my life. Um, Okay, so Sunday Duck, it looks like you're not there, unfortunately, and I'm going to have to abort that game. A lot of people waiting. Yeah, keep the challenges coming. Um, okay, Johnny Walker, I saw you in the chat for a while. Okay, let's go. Yeah, I think Sussex, it was uh, named after the Saxons, so South Saxons. Essex was the East, uh, Saxon land. Um, Oh, I watched this great show on Netflix as well um, about Wessex. They called it The Last Kingdom. Uh, I mean, the show's called The Last Kingdom, and yeah, Wessex was one of the few surviving Saxon kingdoms that wasn't conquered by the uh, by the Vikings all those years ago. I'll pretend I know which year. But, um, no, it's a really interesting show, and it, I learned a lot about history from reading the books, actually, what, 15 years ago. So I'm pushing Harry. I'm pushing... I'm pretending to be Magnus Carlsen and pushing my H-pawn, but... Two moves too late now. And unlike Magnus's uh, h5 move, mine does have, okay, I'm being harsh, but mine does have some point to it. So I'm going to kick his knight away. He has to go back to e2, I think. I'll just develop my bishop. Maybe bishop g4, but then knight e5, so put it on f5. Okay, top of Harley. David, did I face the Budapest best Gambit when I was 2700 over the board? Um, no, surprisingly, the Budapest has been a rare guest at uh, my level. I think I've only faced it a few times in my whole life, actually. Um, half of those were by Lawrence Trent in Blitz games. So, um, yeah, suffice to say that it didn't end well for Lawrence. But I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure about the opening in general. I think White has a few different ways to play. Just like here, my opponents found. Uh, Decent way to play. He's controlling central squares with his knights. 
Bishop F4, though, yeah. Does allow Bishop takes D3, Bishop takes D6, Bishop takes F1. I'm not sure whether I want that one. Okay, I'll take an F4, just so he has to mess about with his knights a bit more. I gain a tempo against his knight, and I'm going to castle queenside. Okay, I'm going to try and open it up at some point as well with E5 or C5. I'm not sure which way my opponent's going to castle. Fish one, you're asking a lot about my address. I mean, <laughs> send me a private message, I might send it to you, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure it's a very wise move to be advertising where I live. I live at number 28, no, <laughs> um, H3. Okay, E5 or C5. Hmm. I'm not sure E5 quite works. I could play rook H8, no. Rook H8, maybe you can take on H4. Okay, I'll play C5. Cthulhu, you've seen previews. Um, if you mean of my video series, then yes, there is actually a preview, a free preview on the Ginger GM um, website. And yeah, it's all at half price right now and not for long either. Along, there's also, I think, uh, 300 puzzles alongside um, the videos. It's a lot of material. It'll keep you busy for weeks if you're bored during this lockdown. There's also PGN files and lots of games and things as well. Anyway, I'll stop the plugging now. The shameless self-promotion. Um, knight d5. So he's moved that knight a lot. He's gone from g1. Wait, no, he's gone from b1 to c3 to e4 to g3 to e2, f4, d3, back to f4, back to d3, now to e5. It's literally half his moves with that knight. Um, okay. Let's take this guy. Now, do I want to take on d4? Probably. Okay, now where's the win? Look at that king on e1. Deserves to be checkmated. I really want to play rook takes d4 here, but I don't think it works. Just want to give him a check somehow. Hmm. Spending too long again. Queen b6 looks tempting. Knight takes f7, rook d4. Okay, let's try this. Um, okay, I'm falling behind in the chat. I can't multitask. Vs85. Apparently, I'm. <laughs> yeah, I was dissing Magnus's h5 move, but that's right. Uh, Simon Williams, uh, my countryman, my compatriot, he he has painted to painted that move in like nearly every opening. H4 with white. I mean, I used to play the Grunfeld all the time against him, and then he'd go like h4, move three, four, five, all the time against me. Okay, knight f3. So he defends d4, but now b2 is hanging up. And that king is still far away from safety. Queen c3 check, or bishop c2. I'll go bishop c2. Uh, maybe he can go queen b5 and swap the queens, but I do win some material. Cthulhu, yeah, you're prolific in the chat today. Um, they're coming out with a new Assassin's Creed game, which deals with the Norse invasions of England. That's right, yeah. I don't really play computer games so much these days. Too busy on chess, uh, but yeah, Assassin's Creed is the one of the few that I have played, and it is really good. Okay, I just want to bring my other rook to c8 now, and I won't sort of queens. Uh, Jan Gustafsson would disown me from the chicken chess club, but I won't swap queens. I'll bring my other rook into the game. Uh, take this pawn and checkmate must be imminent. Okay, take his queen first. And I went, if I played knight 67, queen 64, so, uh, where's the checkmate? Okay. Is this guy going to flag me? Oof. No, he won't. That is checkmate. So, thanks for the game, Johnny Walker. Uh, take a shot for me. <laughs> um, okay, so, back to the challenges. Okay, he's been waiting a long time. Bogdan. You've been waiting a long, long time. And apparently you're a moderator here on Chess24, so... Don't don't ban me if I if I manage to flag you later. Okay, D four. Um, okay, okay, he's quite good. I'll play one of my dodgier openings though. I don't recommend this one. I normally play this Justin Bullet, just because it's easy to remove C five E five D six G six. But um, okay, let's catch up with the chat. Um, okay, I'll play H five now. 
because I've been playing it in every game. That's the second time in a row I think I've played h5 on move five. So Magnus, it's his fault. Okay, h4. Um, I kind of want him to move his c1 bishop before I do this, but okay, I'll play bishop h6, transform off my bad bishop. Mildly interested asks if I'll play any king's gambits. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Depends how, good, how nice you guys are to me. Um, knight h3, so he wants to put it on g5, I guess, which might block things up, so I'll take this knight. Um, bishops don't tend to be so great in these block structures, so get that guy off the board. I'm hoping his h3 bishop doesn't have too much of a future if I keep the position closed. Um, he can't play f4 just yet, either. Giroud 90, yes, I'm from near, near Eastbourne, that's right. Uh, okay, I've got to be careful, he might go f4. How do I get ready for this? Might as well take on eight. Yeah, might as well take this bishop of c1. Mm, do I go queen e7 first and ten that I'm doing? Okay. Ah, I'm so sorry. I'm being indecisive on non-critical moves. It's a big sin in blitz. Okay, a4, he's stopping me playing b5. I guess I'll take this bishop off now and I'll develop my other knight. Pre move to make up for my long thoughts earlier. Play knight f6 next. I don't think he's got anything that can punish that pre move. So. Um, Banele and Zumalo. Apparently, you saw my course and it was it was helpful. That's good. I'm glad. Yeah, the, the, I mean, the, among the different chapters, there's things of like bl the blitz and rapid tips. There's how to deal with time trouble, which I'm an expert in. Not as much of an expert as uh, Sasha Grishuk, but. Uh, it's one of my favorite topics. My pin's playing really well, though. I might have just blundered. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of topics, end games, how to prepare in the openings. Um, okay, yeah, I, I need to get my knight to e5 somehow, but I'm not quick enough. Hmm. I mean, he should take with the rook now for sure. Uh, there, there he does it. Maybe he's listening to me. Uh, rook takes. And the problem is, if I play king e7, he's got ideas such as e5, d takes e5, d6 check. Ah, oh, knight f6 was such a lazy move earlier. Maybe pre moving is bad. Okay. Back to square one. <clears throat> it's all part of the plan, guys. And that one. I mean, luckily he can't play knight b5. I mean, he can play knight b5, but luckily it's not too effective yet. Maybe you can think about it. I'm hoping that there's no obvious way for him to improve his position, whereas I can slowly get organized. I mean, he'd love to play e5 at some point, but I'm not sure, quite sure it works right now. Um, King e7, don't see any downsides to that one. Bring my other rook into the game, maybe knight h6 if I have to. I still want to get my knight to f6 and d7. Okay, so that's very subtle. I know what's coming. Yeah, I don't want to play f6, it's just so weakening, so loosening. What else can I do? Okay, I'll play rook d8 so that I can stop his d-pawn advancing if he plays e5. Um, yeah, thank you, Johnny Walker, for the last game. Miktal, yes, I should have castled earlier, but I was trying to be cool with a block center. I was trying to keep my king in the middle for a potential end game, but it has backfired a bit. Yeah, so king of two. Yeah, he's been very patient, my opponent, which is uh, the right thing to do here. There's no need for him to rush. I'll play knight h6, because I don't know where else to put that knight. Knight f6, e5, look nasty. <laughs> uh, yeah, Miktal's insulting my defensive skills. Um, I agree, they can be improved. Okay, so a5, my opponent's still not doing too much on that side. I'll bring this rook round now. Rook h, e8 coming, and then king f8. Feels like white has to do something quickly, otherwise I'm very happy with my position. Ah, oh, Benelli, thank you. I, yeah, I'm glad you liked it. And the converting advantages, uh, yeah, that's the hardest part of chess, I think. Um, as you can see now, my opponent had an advantage, but it's really hard to convert sometimes if your opponent just stays solid and defends everything. So that's a big part of chess, and it's something that I, I've worked on a lot uh, in my time. So, okay, my king's nice and safe now. I control e5 fully with my pieces. Yeah, he's missing his dark squared bishop. 
Dubbish one H3 is kind of hitting thin air at the moment. Yeah, knight D1, he wants to come to E3, then C4. And I think he should have done this a long time ago. Um, let's see. Let's preempt that with putting a pawn on B5. Okay, I'll just defend everything. Not pre-moving. I mean, he might play G4 at some point. Yeah, he does. Okay, I'm happy to see knights leave the board, though. Okay, I have this knight E8 to defend everything. I win his H1. And okay, now finally I'll bring my knight round to D7. E5. It's taken too long, but it finally ends up on that on that outpost. And actually, I pre-moved rook H8 there, but G5 check would have been winning with a fork. And then king takes knight takes F3. No, but thank you for the game, Bogdan. Um, yeah, you outplayed me for most of that. Just I think maybe just a bit too slow in the middle game. Well, once the queen's game off, play was a bit too slow. So. Okay, I'll play a five game now, a uh, five minute game now, so I can catch up with the chat a bit. Dr. Bocky. Uh, play knight f3. Oh, you guys have been too nice to me in the chat again. I'm not used to this. I'm used to talking to Lawrence Trent and getting insulted every minute. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad you've all enjoyed the videos. And apparently, Pawn Push You on video number 61. That's a lot of time. Yeah, I mean, now's the time to invest. Uh, in our chess. I've been doing more chess work than ever actually these last few weeks. So. Okay, e6. So I, I normally play g3 here, just Fianchetto and play slowly, but I'll play e3 because that's what all the cool kids do. Nice e3. e6, yeah, so my opponent knows some theory. Um, yeah. Lots of people do this. I mean, every time I play Blitz, people do this against me and I never, never know what to do. I actually, I have a notepad for when I play Blitz and um, you know, I write down opening things that I need to check after each Blitz, Blitz session. But <laughs> this one's been on my list for a while and it's never been addressed. So yes, that'll be my weekend, weekend homework. I'm just going to develop now. I've just put my piece on um, sensible squares. Ikaru seems to do this and get an advantage every time. Knight 65, I guess I'll take. Yeah, I'll take with the bishop. So my opponent's very close to equalizing. Um, maybe he has already. Um, just because the pawn structure is going to be symmetrical. I could push e4, but it could backfire. I'm not sure. I want my uh, want my pawn in e4. It could be a target later. It weakens some squares behind it. Jackson 2020, you want me to play 1e6 against you? I could do that, maybe. 1e6 is a good move against nearly every opening, I think. Um, yeah, thank you for the game, Bogdan, and well played. <laughs> Kasparov fan. <laughs> yeah, Lawrence is a victim, but yeah, he's luckily, he's, uh, I mean, I'm lucky enough to call him a good friend. And uh, I'd like to think that the uh, chess abuse is mutual. He does slag off a lot of my moves as well. So. Okay, queen b8. That's a bit of an odd one. He wants to play queen b7. Um, hmm. I mean, the queen's not on such a great square on b7. I'll put my queen on e2 first. Bring my bits to the center. That's a good blitz tip. Just centralize all your pieces so when the tactics start, um, when the flagging starts, you're ready for whatever comes at you. Knight f6. Okay, so... He hasn't put his queen on b7, maybe because he was afraid of e4 there, or he was afraid of bishop a6. Yeah, my knight on f3 isn't great. I could take on c5 here. It's very tempting. Okay, let's do it. Bishop takes c5, maybe I'll take on f6. Um, although, yeah, maybe it's premature to say this. I could take on f6, but his king's not that weak, and he has the bishop pair. Okay, 95, maybe. That's always a good square for the knight, eyeing up the c6 weakness. Mictal, apparently I'm decent at interacting with the chat. That's good. Uh, working on my multitasking uh, skills. I tried to cook the other day while uh, playing some online blitz, which didn't go very well, but keeping an eye on the chat is a bit easier. So queen b7, good move. Um, attacking g2, but I will try and kick his queen away with bishop a6. Yeah, uh, if his bishop wasn't on c5, then I could play f3, e4, and this would be really good for white, but it's not so easy to improve my position here. Maybe I'll try and get rid of that bishop anyway, bishop d4. 
You can play bishop a3, you can play bishop takes d4. Lots of choice. I'm hoping to slowly outplay him later. Bishop on a6 is very annoying for him, maybe. Although bishop, C, bishop b7 might be a decent try at some point. Um, okay, so bishop takes d4, rook takes d4. Now bishop b7, that's a very good move. Though I do get the c6 square. How can I make make use of that? Yeah, I'm not sure it's really possible, actually. Um, yeah, lots of pieces are coming off the board, which is a bit frustrating. I don't really want to let him give me an isolated pawn on d4 either. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I could play bishop, d, bishop b7, queen b7, rook d8, rook d8, knight c6, but just rook d7, I don't really see what I'm gaining. Okay, I'll take once, and then h3. Just give my king some lift. Maybe he'll play h6. Yeah, 95. My opponent's being super solid here. Queen c4, hoping he plays rook c8, and then I'll take it. But he doesn't. Ooh, yeah. My opponent's playing with fire, but I think he's got it under control. I want to play knight c6 here, but well, I'll do it anyway. Yeah, queen c7, I think, is his only move to pin me on the c file. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'm just forking his queen and rook. But queen c7, I am pinned, so maybe I have to break that pin. Maybe I have to play the move like queen takes a7. Oh, my opponent just resigns, though. Queen c7 would have kept him in the game. Um, then queen takes a7, maybe I'm a pawn up, but... Yeah, these symmetrical positions, they're tricky. Trickier than they look. Thank you for the game, Dr. Bocky. Okay, I'm going to play... Um, it's been waiting a long time. Okay, three-minute game this time. Um, that's right, Miktal. Lawrence has beaten some many strong players, including me, but also players like Svidler, Magnus, Fresnay. Back to 2020, who do I think will win the Magnus Invitational? Oof. I don't know. I, I, I think it's either going to be Magnus Carlsen, Ding Lai Ren, or Hikaru Nakamura. I mean, I bet a lot of money that it's one of those three. But no, I, I think Magnus is still a decent favourite, um, both for his match tomorrow and the final. I think Hikaru still has a bit of a mental block against Magnus. Um, meanwhile, my opponent's being super aggressive, pushing everything forward. Okay, I think I have to go back, otherwise I might get trapped. Yeah, I think move four, c5. I learned that one from Jan Gustafsson. He won a great game with it, but it's super dodgy. Don't try it at home. Um, yeah, I'll play nice c6, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a bad French for black because white's gained so much space, but that's, yeah. Pawns don't move backwards. Okay, knight a3, so it's a good move. He wants to bring it back to c2 to defend d4. Not easy knowing what I should do here. You can tell I'm not a French defense player by, na by nature. I'll play h5 just to try and get some squares for my pieces. If he plays g5, there's some, I mean, f5 is an outpost. If he takes, I'll try and put my knight on f5 maybe. Uh, Bogdan, yes, it didn't go well for the clicking and it didn't go well with the chess. <laughs> Multitasking is beyond, beyond me. So, okay, so my opponent's, you know, he's simply taken on h6. Maybe he assumes that knights are better than bishops in these positions. But I do have some queen a5 checks, maybe. I can take d4, then give a check on a5, win but my h5 pawn. How does that look? Maybe that's not so much. I could take a d4 and then go bishop f5 as well, but oh, I don't know. Um, could just go e6. Okay, let's give a check. Because I'm, I'm a chicken and I want to get the queens off. I think um, his king side is probably more. Well, I'm hoping that he has some weaknesses there now, especially without his dark square bishop to um, defend those h4 pawns and the d4 pawn later. Bishop d3 is good because I want to play bishop f5. Hmm. So he's going knight g2, knight g3. So I'll probably have to go e6 and bishop e7. Maybe I can 
Can I grab that pawn? Might be a greedy little uh, so-and-so. I'll try. Yeah, so g5, knight g2, bishop g5, rook h8 check. So I guess I have to go back the whole way. Not ideal, but I think it's only temporary. I don't can castle queenside, luckily. I haven't moved my king yet. Um, okay. Um, Benele Enzumalo is asking in the chat, would I recommend any books on calculation? Um, I mean, there, there are quite a few good books out there. Um, actually, the way that I learn calculation these, or that I practice calculation these days is um, by looking at a lot of endgame studies. Even things like Dovoretsky um, are very good for long, tricky endgames where you have to, well, have to consider all the options. Bishop G6. I mean, that doesn't threaten anything. And also, can I not just take that? King F7. I think I defend. So yeah, I would recommend endgame studies are great for calculation. Um, most calculation, there are actually uh, lots of pieces on the board, but the same ideas are recurring, like process of elimination and so on. No, thank you, Heisenberg, um, for the game. Just bishop g6 check at the end there, I think wasn't necessary. Maybe there was a way to get some compensation for the pawn. Uh, OK, back to the challenges. Uh, I'm sure I've played Kasparov, fan. You're, you're always in the chat, but I'm not sure I've played you in these multiple sessions yet. So oof, b3. That's cheeky. That's cheeky. Actually, I once played um, these two brothers in a blitz tournament. Uh, it was like a 15 round blitz tournament. And um, I played one of the brothers. I think they were twins, actually. I played them. I played the first one in round one. He played 1a3 against me and just laughed, just laughed at me. Um, and I played g6, which is supposed to be quite a good move there because b4 could be bent with bishop g7. Um, and then a few rounds later, I played his brother, who played 1a3 against me and just laughed again. Uh, and I thought, you know, that's so cheeky, it deserves to be punished. So I played g5 that time. And now my opponents just stopped me playing g5. Gutted. Okay, do I castle queenside? But yeah, a a3 is maybe not as good a move as b3. But now my opponent is setting up. I think he's going to try and set up like a hippo. I will castle though. Yeah, and the hippo is white. And whenever I try and play the hippo, I think it's quite a good blitz opening. I would normally try and put my pawn in h3 rather than h4. Uh, um, Jackson 2020, can I do a blitz repertoire? I'm actually, yeah, I'm just... okay, let me know in the chat, but I'm thinking of genuinely writing a blitz repertoire book um, or doing some kind of videos series on blitz tips or blitz repertoire, uh, that type of thing. Because um, I went through a stage, I think for five years, I always got to the last three or finished in the top three of every Blitz event I played. And I just love, I love Blitz. It's so much of an addiction. But um, So yeah, it'll be nice to share some tips, but I'm not sure how much of a market there'd be for that. Uh, people who tend to play Blitz, they normally have their set systems anyway, and they, they like you know sticking to what they know and what they enjoy, so. Um, yeah, fish one. Apparently, Lawrence Trent does mention me in his uh, video series on Chess 24 uh, on the Trompovsky. And I'm sure, yeah, Lawrence did win a nice game against me when I was about 10 years old in Trompovsky. I played rather naively. I didn't know him so well back then, so I should have, I should have, uh, I think these days I'd seen him, I'd see his tricks coming. 94, though. That does allow me to take on g3. Or I could flick in this one first, attacking his bishop. Um, yeah, actually, Lawrence, uh, so just before the lockdown, I went into um, a prison in England to play some chess and give a small talk to them. Um, the prison I went into, they're, they're competing in the World Prison Chess Championship and actually some really good players in there. And it's part of their kind of rehabilitation program. But then they mentioned that Lawrence Trent had been in a few months before and he showed them one of his wins against me. I think probably his, he's only beaten me maybe once or twice uh, in our in our careers. But yeah, he just happened to show that game. So I thought I'd get revenge and show them one of my wins against him. Uh, g3. Okay, which one do I take? Do I take d4 or take g3? Okay, let's take the bishop on g3. Maybe h4 is hanging. Maybe I can take on d4 later. White's king is very weak. That's why you shouldn't play h4 when you play the hippo. Okay, queen e2. Could just take on h4 here, I guess. I'll play rook e8. Rooks are normally good when they're 
staring down against Queens. Um, that's right, Top Harley. There's also a good book on calculation by Jakob Argard. Um, I would say that's maybe for a certain level. Um, yeah, I mean, Ar the Argard books, I've, I've suggested it to players of different strengths and some kind of appreciate it more than others. Um, but yeah, I mean, Argard's a great writer. So I do too. Okay, I'll just take this pawn now because I'm greedy. I'm going to collect everything. Gambit7, um, if you check out my Twitter, I post a bit about it there. So, uh, yeah, I feel a bit self-conscious doing all this self-promotion right now. So, yeah, just uh, message me on Twitter or something and I'll, I'll sort it out. Um, okay, let's just swap everything off. I am two pawns up. Hopefully that's enough. All right, let's defend A5 first. I forgot that I was hanging for a while. Um, okay, queen back. I guess queen e7. Let's bring my queen nearer his king. Yeah, with queens on the board, it's often nice to have a bit more pawn protection in front of the king. Um, now, what do I do? Do I play bishop f6 or do I play queen g5 check? Don't see anything wrong with this one. I'm tempted to be really, uh, really cynical now and just play queen c5 to swap off queens. But no, I'm going to be even more greedy than that. I'm going to take a3. And okay, queen c5 now, he has d4. Oh, wait, so I nearly played queen d6. Okay, queen d6 is safe. Bishop f7 is also safe here. I don't know really what I'm thinking. I'm low on time as well. Bishop h3, I think I can take it because queen e8 check, queen f8 blocks. Okay, now time to give this king some space. I'm going to play bishop f7 and start pushing my b pawn and my a pawn. So, Kasparov fan, thank you for the game. Yeah, I'm a bit of a Kasparov fan myself. Uh, so you have a great username. Okay, whoa, so many challenges. Okay, um, I, I'm so indecisive. I'm going to get into time trouble just thinking who to choose here. Um, I'm going to keep trying to play people who I haven't played in the previous banter blitzes, but yeah, if I have time, I'll get around as many as possible. So, okay, I have white again. Okay, my opponent played b3 last time. Let's play b3. And... Hikaru Nakamura School of Chess. Okay, um, what's Hikaru play here? Knight f3. e3. Castles. e4. c5. Please play c5. Please play c5. c5 is a good move. Please play it. <laughs> you can, yeah, that's how I think during chess games. Just please play. <laughs> I beg my opponents in my mind. Uh, C5 actually is a famous trap that everyone falls for against Hikaru. Um, I think there was this tournament in uh, was it Antwerp um, that in this Blitz and Rapid, uh, the Grand Chess Tour tournament, that three games in a row people played C5 against Hikaru, and after D takes C5, Queen A5 check, C3, Queen takes C5, Bishop A3 wins a pawn there for White. Uh, it's quite a nice trap um, that you can catch people with, and I actually caught someone with it the first time I played, well, I played one E3 for the first time in my life recently and I caught someone in that exact trap. So that's a reason to watch Hikaru Nakamura's uh, bullet games. Um, okay, B6. So again, channeling my inner Nakamura, what would he play here? He'd probably play nice E3. C takes d5, knight d5, e4. Maybe it's the more ambitious way to play, but yeah. Feels like if I've developed my queen side first, then it doesn't make so much sense to be pushing in the center. Yeah, this wasn't very exciting. Uh, wasn't a very fun opening. Sorry, guys. Miktal. David, you beat Aronian last year. Was that the game where Nakamura sat next to you and you couldn't... <laughs> Yeah, so actually for anyone who's interested, um, I would recommend going and checking out that video. It must be on YouTube some, somewhere. Um, uh, just type, I mean, I'm sure there's hundreds of videos, but just type in Nakamura's facial expressions or something like that. And actually Simon Williams was commentating with Yvanka Huska on that game. Uh, so I was playing against Aronian. Uh, it was the final round of Gibraltar. I was against Aronian and Nakamura was sitting next, uh, next to us. He was playing against Niels Grandelius, I think. And yeah, Aronian sacrificed a piece against me and it was just, just didn't work. And it was quite clear that it didn't work um, as long as I saw a couple of traps. 
and yeah, Nakamura's faces were just incredible. I actually had to just cover my cover my face <laughs> because I kept I was trying not to laugh. Actually, um, Naka would literally try and make eye contact with Aronian, who was sitting like right next to him, um, just to kind of show him how disapproving he was. And yeah, it was a bit surreal. But yeah, I did manage to win that game, and um, Aronian had beaten me so many times before that. But luckily, there, yeah, I managed to win with Black and. Won a little bit of money, which is a nice bonus. So that was using my favorite Karakan. I managed to use a novelty that I'd discovered 10 minutes before the game. Um, oops, Jackson 2020, when's my birthday? Um, long, long way away, November. It's my big 30th this year. So I'm debating whether to have a massive party. Um, okay, B65. So now, 65, 95, Bishop G7, 93. Fe three king g seven, maybe black's okay there. Hmm. So if I can't win a pawn, if I can't win a pawn, then I'll just try and take a long term. Uh, now I have at least a potential pass pawn on the queen side long term. I'm not sure he ever wants to take on c four either because then he has some weak isolated pawns on the queen side. Yeah, for those who, who do remember the video, there's a few of you in the chat. Yeah, it was uh, hilarious to see Naka at his best. Okay, d6, c4. Bishop takes c4, knight b6. He gains a bit of time. I could play knight d2 here as well. Maybe knight d2. Knights are normally good in front of isolated pawns, so I'll try and put a knight in front of that c pawn. Um, if he takes me, I take with the bishop, and at least my bishop's on, the, bishop's on a good square. I don't have to retreat. Okay, I'm like three minutes behind in the chat. Oh, just want people saying I was good at keeping up. Okay, rook bd8, knight a5, is that a good move? Uh, I want to use the c6 square. Let's jump in here. I'm very tempted after bishop a8 to just go bishop f3, just to conquer that c6 square. Knight fd5 is coming at some point, though, for him, so I've got to be a bit careful uh, how I can beat that, that one. Uh, I tempted to move my c3 knight, but there's no really good squares. Okay, let's play bishop f3. I mean, knight, okay, take, take. I guess he'll go knight, one of the knights to d5. And then I've got to calculate whether knight c6 is possible. Okay, rook c8. So now knight c6, he wants to go a6. This must be better for me, but I've got to start playing quickly. a4, not sure why. Okay, he, want, he really wants to play knight d5, so I'm going to stop that. It's really anti-positional to play e4, but just wanted to rule that one out forever. So I don't have to calculate. Okay, now I'll jump in and jump in and kick him back. And, oh, I forgot that was legal. <laughs> I was going to pre-move knight a4, which was probably a good move. Um, yeah, that's a really good move. Knight a7, I guess. I have to go b6. Now I'm winning, but no time. Now Rook takes b6, says so knight takes, ah, uh, knight takes, uh, knight d7 check. Whew. I couldn't even talk there, I was so nervous. Uh, thank you, Diego, well played. Yeah, so just go, going back a couple of moves, if, after knight 65, if you played Rook takes b6, there was knight d7 check with a fork, and because of that, I think I was winning. But yeah, close shave there. I'm getting luckier now. Um, the games are very testing. So, okay, Giroud, lots of challenges again, Giroud 90. Olivier Giroud, great footballer. Okay, if, if you messaged earlier and I missed your message in the chat, um, feel free to write it again. I'm just going to try and catch up a bit now. Um, okay, what have I played? I've played the Caro and E6 or E5. I'm too scared to play the Modern or the Perk because I just I always get crushed every time I play it. So I'm more classical. Um, okay, I'll play Lawrence Trent's favourite opening. We've been talking about him too much, so... If you're watching Lawrence, this is in your honor. He wants to beat Peter Fiddler with this one. Yeah, c3. I mean, g6 is a move there. Knight g6 is maybe a move. d5, r, d3. I don't approve of that one. I don't want to swap queens. Not sure what else I can do there. Okay, d takes e4 is the boring way to play. I think that would just be equal, but. Yeah, Zeeland Zen. I, I would love it if you threw me a surprise birthday party. Okay, knight bd2. 
so I develop. Yeah, the, I need to get a new tablet. The battery's running out with the chat on it. Um, I charged it to 100% literally about half an hour ago. And it, yeah. I've got a phone that's like, I think 2012 or 2011. And I've got a tablet that's like 2013 or 14. I really need to update my tech. Um, I really want to play Queen D7 in Castle Queenside, but I'm scared I'll get hit by B4, A4 stuff at some point. Maybe D4 here as well. It's good. But, but bring it on. Actually, let's charge this. Charge this thing so I can keep up with you guys in the chat. Tracks in 2020. No, I haven't lost any today, but it's getting closer. I can feel it coming. Um, yeah, I, I, mean, I think I've lost I lost one um, one a while ago. And yeah, last time I played Banter Blitz, I was very lucky in a lot of games as well. So um, yeah, I'm just a dirty, dirty flagger at heart. I pretend I'm all classical with my one E4, E5 repertoire, but then. Um, okay, do I take one E4 now? Okay, once I've said A, I might as well say B in Castle Queenside. Takes too long to go knight g6, bishop b7, and castle kingside. So I'm really castling into an attack here, I feel, but oh well. Um, yeah, some good questions in the chat there. Lof Lord Iffy, Lord Iffy, ask whether it's possible to make a living as a chess player. Oof. Yeah, professional chess, it's a difficult life. Um, I mean, it's not just the financial issues, it's like having to earn money and sometimes having the pressure to win tournaments to just to put bread on the table. It's also kind of, there's a big mental health aspect to it. I think like if you're constantly competing, it's got upsides and downsides um, for the ego and for uh, just maintaining a balance. It's a lot of pressure that you put on yourself. Often you're traveling, living out of a suitcase, um, different hotel each week. And yeah, it's a lonely lifestyle at times. So yeah, professional chess um, up and down, but I think there's so many perks. You know, you get to travel the world, you get to hang out with some cool people um yeah you got to do something you love for a living so i'm very lucky and i appreciate it but it's never easy the journey for sure and i think that's something we should all be um well chess players maybe need to discuss a bit more because i know some people struggle with the mental uh, health aspect side of things okay bishop b3 um do i put my knight in f4 do i play g4 do i play a6 first a6 feels wrong because it might give him a hook for his his pieces. Then again, hmm. oh, this is sharp stuff now. I kind of want to play G4, knight FD2, knight G4. Okay, let's do this. Yeah, maybe I should flick an A6. Okay, I'm not sure what he's thinking about. His knight only has one square to go back to. Oh, wow, he takes there. Yeah, so now if I take on F3, I guess he'll take on e6 or c6 and he takes on d7 with check which is annoying so yeah i missed this one to be honest i was too busy talking about some nonsense okay okay now i'll play a knight f4 i want to get rid of that bishop before he takes on a7 or goes knight c5 or something and now take take now i've got ideas like f3 um yeah professional chess it's a difficult lifestyle but definitely recommend it for you those of you who are in love with the game and uh Wow, this guy really doesn't care. Okay, F3, let's open things up. He's a brave man. Queen E3 is a good move though. Doesn't let me, doesn't let me open up his king side. Okay, I mean, I don't think he's take, threatening really to take on C6 and then A7, but I'll defend it just in case. Um, is this lockdown an issue financially? Um, good question. Yeah, I, I am classified as self-employed. Um, okay, I'll talk about this soon. But knight e4 is a good move. Ah, uh, okay, let's take. Okay, that's a really. What am I doing? I thought he'd take on <laughs> with the d4 and then queen 61, and it was sharp, but now I'm just worse. Oh well, okay, <laughs> let's flag. Uh, okay. We'll get flagged. I'm just complete. I'm so much worse here. Um, I meant to go rookie eight. That was a slip. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, 
Yes. Got in. Oof. Touchpads, they're the best. Trust me, guys. You no, know, well played, Giroud90. You had me there. You had me. Um, okay, I've got a few challenges that aren't five minutes. So if you have challenged me and you are, um, yeah, and you do want a game, then make sure it's a three minute or five minute game. Um, I've got some with increment there, and I don't think we have time, unfortunately, for that. So, okay, Blunder Panda. Um, oh, I've got black again. Sicilian this time. Okay, yeah, I'm really behind with the chat. Sorry, guys. Uh, if you played Bishop B5, I was going to play H5. Ah, oh, gutted. Okay, what do the cool kids play here? They play E5, but I don't like that, so I'll play E6. Jackson 2020, you think chess is a hobby, not a job for living? Oof, controversial. Uh, just when I was about to give you a game, Jackson 2020. Okay, so. Um, yeah, my opponent's played bishop b3 and f3, which I think is a bit slow. Now I can open up the center, maybe. Um, I, often black plays d6 bef uh, early in the Sicilian, but here maybe I, if I can play d5 and one go, then it makes sense before white gets fully ready. So a3. Yeah, I can take on c3 now, which looks good. Uh, I can go back to a5. Okay, let's take this guy and go queen a5. Fish one. Apparently, I don't need to say to be honest because I'm always honest. Well, that's what you think uh, behind closed doors. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even realize I was saying that. So I'll try and stop. Top of Harley. Apparently, you want to see a video series about my touchpad skills. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, sometime on Twitter, <laughs> I might post a picture of my touchpad because it's literally battered um, to the point where, I mean, yeah, it's kind of supposed to be black, but bits keep getting chipped off because I play so much and there's like a, a face, a, the shape of a face has developed on my touchpad because of all the bits of, which have been chipped off over the years. Um, okay, Bishop at C, C4. So he wants to develop quickly, but I am pawn up. Yeah, I'll take this guy as well. Oh, Blunder Panda. You're either a, an attacking genius or all of your pawns are dropping. Okay, let's play 95. 95 bishop b5 check, bishop e 7 looks okay. Yeah, that's right, Shah Pirat. Um, I think Pascal will be doing his uh, his after show on the Magnus Carlsen Invitational after this, so definitely stick around for that one. Um, yeah, Pascal's promised to kick me off anytime uh, when his show is ready to go. So, Okay, I've got a bishop's off, that's a good start. And now... Ooh, I was about to play knight takes f3, but then don't really want his rook getting in the game. So I'll castle first. Bishop d4. Okay, that's a good move. Hmm. So the only only way he can ever checkmate me is on g7, right? So let's take this guy and play f6. So now, if he can't check me on g checkmate me on g7, then I think I'm doing well. Um, e5, I guess he wants to play queen h6, but I can just defend that. Hmm. Okay, I don't see any reason not to play e5 here. Maybe queen h5 was a safer move. Just get my queen into the defense. I just want to set up rook f7, knight f8, and enjoy my extra pawn advantage. Yeah, Giroud90, thanks for the game. Yeah, uh, lying on the bed playing Blitz does often mean that you will get flagged. So yeah, I'm very sorry about that, but I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. I've got rating points to protect. So. No, you played really well though, Giroud. Um, definitely had me at some point there. Um, Gambit7, where do decent tournaments get money for their prize funds. Um, I, I mean, there's some sponsorship involved. Um, some big open tournaments, there's entry fees um, for players, and then whatever they get from entry fees goes into a big pot at the end for the winner. Um, it's different ways, really. Um, it'll be nice to see chess become more like a mainstream sport, and there's kind of a bit more uh, revenue coming in for the tournament, sponsor, tournament organizers and everything just to uh, put on some great events. But yeah, money's always an issue uh, with any competitive pursuit, I think. Um, Shark Pirat, 
yeah. Yeah. Luckily, uh, Pascal's tripping in the, in the chat there, GM Pacman. Um, I'm not getting kicked off quite yet soon, but not yet. So if you guys can tolerate me for another little while, then, then you are stuck with me, I'm afraid. So H4, he's pushing Harry. Okay, Queen E4. It's really weird hearing my own voice actually because uh, I've literally been sitting in silence for the last, for most of the last five weeks in the lockdown. Um, okay, I've centralized the queen. I'm going to play knight f8 at some point. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's really annoying that this this pin on pin on the g file. Okay, don't think he's doing anything with it though. I'm going to slowly come and try and take all his pawns. I'm losing control of it actually. I've defended that one luckily. Yeah, I don't think he has any tricks now. Actually, it's a bit silly to allow a check, but oh well. No harm done. Rook C2 or pre move that one. He only has one check. And checkmate's coming on G2. Ah, oh, well done, blunder, blunder, panda. No blunders there really. Just very aggressive. Aggressive chess, so okay. Another game. Augustine Toms. Okay, another FM. What haven't I played? Okay, I haven't played E4 today. I've had enough of B3. Luis Ruby. Luis Rubio, you enjoy the banter. Good. I need to trash talk more though. I keep getting told this. It's just not in my nature. I don't know how. Yeah, if you wanted the trash talk, then I'm sure you'd get Lawrence or someone else. So. August and Tom's, apparently, you might not be at the board. What's up with that? Okay, 10 more seconds. Otherwise, that's an abort and another game. That's right, Topper Harley. Uh, the plan is to go 90 minutes with this banter blitz, but with me, there's always extra time, sometimes penalties. Okay, August and Tom's. Sorry. That's not, yeah. Uh, if you're not the board ready to start, then you miss your chance. Okay, another player that's been waiting a while, Jeremy3298. I hope that's not his ELO rating, otherwise I am screwed. Am I allowed to say screwed? Is that a rude word? Sorry, otherwise I am uh, in danger. <laughs> hmm. Jeremy, where are you? Two in a row, that's not good. I think everyone's fallen asleep after all the excitement of the Magnus Carlsen invitation earlier. Oh no, okay, just in time. I was literally about to click abort, so Jeremy, game on. I'm gonna play my favorite opening now. I've been playing the C3 Sicilian since I was five years old, so. Um, yeah, that's another one I thought about doing a video series on, but knowing my luck, I'll probably lose this one and never be allowed to. Um, yeah, certainly well the C3 Sicilian, but over the years, of, oh, I thought he'd take on d6. No, a3 is a good move. Yeah, over the years, the c3 Sicilian's kind of fallen by the wayside. It's maybe not quite such a great weapon against the very top guys. Um, I played it against Magnus in 2009 and managed to make a draw, but a long, long time ago. Okay, so a6 is a good move because I was thinking about d4 and then knight b5. Do I really want to play d3 here? My knight on a3 needs to get in the game. I wish I hadn't pre moved that one. Um, d4, he'll probably take everything. cd4, knight d4, knight d4, queen d4. Then he might take on a3, and my pawn structure is bad. My two bishops aren't great. So, okay, d3, it is. But now my knight wants to be back on b1 to go knight d2, knight d4. Not, not ideal. Oh well. Okay, I'll bring it into the game now. Maybe you can play knight a5, get rid of my bishop. Mm. Yeah, I think he wants to play e5 at some point to free up his c8 bishop, but then maybe my bishop on b3 becomes strong, so you should prepare that one. Yeah, with knight a5, exactly. I need to stop mentioning good moves for my opponents in the chat. Uh, I mean, in the uh, broadcast. Yeah, slightly worse, I think, maybe, once he takes my bishop. Okay, I'll take the pawn. Now e5 looks like a good move. I don't really see what I'm doing against that one. 95 is also a decent try. Do I take now and go d4? Uh, but bishop g4, this bishop comes out. 
Yeah, I'll put my knight on c4, just try and force him back slightly, which should be seven, I guess. Um, and then I'll decide what to do. Yeah, this game's this game's gonna be tough, I can tell. Iron Man, Iron Man TH, David, brutal speed down the stretches. Impressive young GM. I mean, I'm not young, but thank you for enjoying my flagging skills. Okay, I have to take this guy now, rid of, get rid of the two bishops. Now I'll try and pretend I'm attacking, maybe put my knight in e4. This bishop on b7 is going to be super strong though. Looks like one of those martial gambits, I like those 1 e4, e5s, where black pretty much has the same position but with an extra e6 pawn. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it. Queen h5 just knight f6, she's nothing. Oh, I'm just worse. I'm worse. Oh well. Um, yeah, VS85. Yeah, no matter what Magnus says, though, you're right. He is the boss. So um, I'm not sure I should repeat some other things. Okay, Queen C6. G2 is not feeling entirely safe, so I'll put my Queen on G3 maybe if I get time. F5 is too early because of knight g5. I think maybe you'll do it anyway. Yeah, that's a good move. Okay. My bishop on c1 just has no prospects, though. This is the reason I'm slightly worse here. I mean, his bishop on b7 is beautiful. How do I improve, though? It's easy for black to improve his position. Just king h8, yeah, f6, e5, maybe. Um, Okay, there's a real problem on this uh, d3 pawn. Actually, I've got an idea, but it looks a bit ugly. Okay, let's play this one. <laughs> trust me, guys, don't play f3 ever, but trust me, there's just this once. My idea is, okay, don't tell my opponent, but my idea is queen f2. Okay, so now queen f2. Oh, now I win a pawn. Yeah, I'll take the, try and get the queens off if I can. Maybe knight 65 as well, but I'm a bit cramped, so the more pieces I exchange, the better my position becomes, I hope. Okay, he allows a queen exchange, which I think is a big, big mistake. He should just play queen e6 or queen e8 or something and just hope for compensation, but now I take everything off the board. Oh, ooh, a6 is hanging. No, I'm not that greedy. I'll play d4. My knight is better than his bishop now. His bishop has no real open diagonals, no real targets. It's a6 pawn is weak, I'm a pawn up. Yeah, I'm a trickster. Queen f2, luckily he didn't see my threat, but I was in big trouble before that. Okay, now I'll fix this pawn on a6. Nice and positional. Got my knight on c5, outpost. Yeah, just king f2, rook e7. Um, at some point I'll take on a6. Maybe I'll play rook e7 first, just go active with my other rook. And now I'll play rook takes a6 once all the rooks are off the board. It should be straightforward. Don't really see any plan for black. Bishop c4, rook e2 maybe, so I'll try and stop that one. You pre-moved, and yeah, pre-moves. They're risky. Thank you, Jeremy, for the game. Yay. Ooh. Okay, I can't resist. King of the nil. Not sure who you are, king of the nil. Okay, anonymous, but he has a high rating. Let's do this. Um, VS85, so while I was playing, you asked about a good line for black against the Alapin. Yeah, two d5 or two knight f6, I think, are, are both in great shape right now. Two knight f6 is like the classical way of doing it if you fight, think you're a more positional player. d5, maybe if you're happy to imbalance it a bit more. Yeah, just lots of good lines. I recommend just, same with any opening. If you're not sure about what to play, check out what all the top guys do in that in that specific line. So my opponent's really quick here. Um, okay, so he's played this line. C takes d4 is normal, but I'll try something a bit different. Um, I, I saw Mamad Yarov once play this against Pelletier like 10 years ago or something and won a nice game as black. So yeah, I don't recommend it at home. But okay, I'll pin this knight. Now I'll, do I play e5? Yeah, I mean, if I don't break down white center, then my c4 move looks a bit silly. So I'll let him take me and then I'll go queen e7. Now I'll take an f3. 
That's a bit strange the way my opponent's played. He's let me gain a few tempi. Like bishop g4, he's had to move his queen twice now, and now I can take on e5 with my knight. I'm not sure I want to. Do I want to play knight b4? Do I want to play rook d8 first? Okay, I'll take first. Uh, my bishop on g7 is quite good, but then again, my opponent has two bishops, kingside majority. Yeah, I, I guess it's about balanced. Okay, queen e2. Yeah, maybe he's going f4, e4, both, pushing everything there. I'll put my rooks to the center. Why not? CK Russ, oh yeah, I'm, a, I'm minutes behind again in the chat. Sorry, I'll try and catch up. But CK Russ says, um, young and old isn't measured in years. There are old 20 year olds and young 40 year olds. And that's right. Uh, yeah, I don't judge a, I don't judge, I'm not ageist or anything. Um, I do feel very old these days. I've been invited, to, I think, like 12 weddings in the last two, three years. So everyone's moving past. Uh, I'm still desperately. <laughs> well, this comes up every week. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm still a chess playing bachelor. All my friends are married with kids. Um, yeah, I mean, it's for that reason I feel old rather than anything else. So, okay, queen e2. So he's played a4 to try and keep my knight away. I'm tempted to play knight d3 here, but after a5, well, maybe a5, knight d5. I want to maintain a knight on d3. The other way is to go knight d, cd7, knight c5, knight d3, but it's a bit slow. I'll jump in now, maybe. What's he doing against this? Yeah, now I'll go knight d5. Knight d7, I think he can just take on d3. Now bishop d3, knight takes c3, intermediate move. So yeah, the age thing, I, I, yeah, I go on about it all the time, but I do feel old. I think I, it's just because I'm slower than I used to be with chess as well, like calculation, it's all a bit slower. I do wake up in the mornings with aching joints. I used to be pretty, pretty in shape, pretty fit. These days I can literally uh, barely go up the stairs without being out of breath. And I don't even have uh, the virus as an excuse. So. Um, <laughs> Fish one, for someone who's, who feels age time pressure, you are surely addicted to time scrambling. That's right, <laughs> time trouble. Maybe, I think that's what I call my autobiography. Um, confessions of a time trouble addict. Okay, so knight a4, knights in the room are normally dim. I do have knight f4 here, but knight f4 doesn't really do too much. Um, oh, it feels like there's something great here for black. Must be. Do I take c1? I don't really want to take c1. So then I could put my other knight into d3. Uh, I'll just maintain the pressure. When in doubt, just keep things ticking along, knight b4. Yeah, it's really hard to improve my position here. That's an odd one because I think I can win a pawn now. Uh, bishop b3, I guess. Yeah, so he's attacking a7, which is annoying. How do I improve my position? I don't really want to play a6. I'm too slow. I'll play it anyway. <laughs> okay, uh, now I really want to defend my rook. My rook defended, but I don't really see how. Oh, I'm getting nervous. My position's so good, but okay, let's defend this guy. Oh, that's a bad move. Yeah, because of that one. That was so bad. I might have to bail out at some point now with rook c8. Yeah, not great for me there. Actually, I think maybe I'm just worse. Actually. Yeah, probably just worse. Yeah, I think I should be able to hold this one, but no time. No time. Oh, I nearly put <laughs> nearly bishop d4 there. Sneaky trick. <laughs> Doesn't work. I'm just clearly worse here. Ooh, we should see through there. Uh, I probably would be fine. Okay, let's just try not to lose on time. Okay, shall I offer a draw? Uh, my opponent's offering me a draw, which is very nice of him. I will accept. Now, well played, King of the Mill. Uh, King of the Nil. I had you there, but yeah. Around the moment that I went a6, I spent far too long and played far too indecisively. So, I thank you for the game. Okay, um, whoops, okay, we've been waiting a long time. I'll play, how much time do we have? We don't have too long left, so I'll try and play just three minute games from now on. So if you have challenge five minute, then um, yeah, then maybe try a three minute challenge this time. 
I'll play knight c3. I have this thing and uh, this obsession like on the database I'm trying to play as many possible first moves as possible. So yeah, I said possible far too many times there. Uh, I've got e3, c3, b3, e3, all those things on the database, but not knight c3 yet. Um, it looks like I won't be able to play it in a proper game now either. So my opponent, he's not there. Okay, Akiko. Missed your chance, mate. Okay. Um, Pygmalion. Pygmalion. Okay. Okay. Since it didn't work last time, let's play it this time. Okay, I'll just catch up with a recent chat. King of the Nil. You said you were lucky, but no, you played fast and you played very strong once. Um, once you were slightly worse, maybe you played very well after that. So, King of the Nil. Well done. Um, oh, my opponents, what's up with this? Pygmalion 92. Not there. Okay. I'm going to have to do it. Just I'm going to have to be ruthless. Okay. Um, who haven't I played so far? Sidali Chess. Sidali Chess. I feel like I know a player called Sidali, but I'm not sure. Maybe people are just getting put off by my one nice E3 and they just they want to troll me back by refusing to start the game. Oh, could this be three in a row? Sidali, please make a move. I beg you. Uh, okay. Sidali isn't there either, so. Okay, let's go for a record. Three in a row now. Uh, okay, I'm looking for three minute challenges. Iron Man. It's just because I'm a massive Marvel fan. Okay, please play a move now. Otherwise, I'll have to stop playing Knight C3. Okay, thank you. Two Knights Tango. this one um okay it takes d4 and uh, i six bishop g5 yeah jackson 2020 puns on my i'm very used to the puns on my name david howell like i used to there used to be newspaper articles being like how well has he done um like yeah this first line from king's Lear, howl 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 also, this anime movie, um, Howl's Moving Castle. That was a familiar one. Um, okay, c5. So now I can give a check on e5 or e3. Queen e3, queen e7. Queen, e queen e5, I definitely double his pawns, but I lose the tempo. Okay, it's worth it, I think. Queen e5. Yeah, so puns on my name. I'm very used to them. Howl's, yeah, Howl's Moving Castle. That was one. Um, the Howling Commandos, all of these ones. Augustine Toms, yeah, sorry, you went at the board earlier, so I couldn't, I couldn't start the game. Um, I'm not sure we'll get too much time to play another one, um, but yeah, challenge me and I'll see, see what I can do, for sure. Okay, I'm que keeping queens on the board. Knight d5 is a big threat now. I might castle queenside. Black's position isn't great, unfortunately. Okay, queen e5, that's a very good move, though. Yeah, I missed that one. Running away like a coward now. Luckily, I'm still controlling the d5 square. Um, Chesterfish. Is it better to learn to play different openings or have a narrow repertoire? Um, I would say it depends, really. Um, how, firstly, how much time you have to study. Secondly, how much you play. Uh, I don't think there's any reason to have a massive repertoire. Um, if you're not playing too often or if you think your opponents won't have too much time to prepare against you, it's better to know one or two things inside out and know them really deeply and know that, you know, all the plans, all the middle game plans, all the pawn structures. It's better to know all of those rather than kind of spend hours and hours learning everything about chess. I mean, not everyone can understand every pawn structure, every opening. So um, it's best to be realistic if that's the case. Even now, I try to specialize in maybe three or four openings i don't try and learn everything i don't try and um, play things that i think i might not understand um, or that i feel will suit my opponent's styles better um, it's yeah especially with rapid and blitz as well it's better to stay in your comfort zone don't let your opponent dictate what kind of positions you get or what kind of openings you get so um, i hope that answers your question chesterfish okay 
top of Harley. I made a hat trick. Yeah, that's right. I guess you mean the pe players who aborted against me. Yeah, not the best kind of hat trick I've ever scored, but a hat trick nonetheless. So Queen G4 might be his idea. That's the only square for his queen, right? So, okay, it's a bit slow, but I want to stop Queen G4. H5. Free pawn. Yes. I do love a bit of free pawn. Um, I mean, taking free pawns. <laughs> Um, okay, more questions. Okay, I think I'm up to date with the chat. That's a rarity. Okay, let's get my last piece into the game. D1. Okay, I'm gonna fire. I'm really trying not to exchange queens. I'm really going against my own nature here. Um, G5. Yeah, my opponent's making life hard for me though. I'm also getting spammed in uh, Messenger. The notifications keep popping up. I think my friends are planning a group video call. Um, yeah, so I finally managed to stop the queen exchange. And now, rook d5, finally. I win something. I mean, black's position was always hard because of the bishop 27 and the bad pawns, but now it looks like too much material. I'm attacking both, both bishops. Zeeland Sen, you need exchange on when you need tips on when to exchange queens. Thanks. Uh, yeah, it's hard to know when to exchange queens. It's normally if the long term, um, long term features of the position do favour you, um, or if you're being attacked and you need to just kind of uh, lessen the pressure uh, as quickly as possible. Then a queen exchange is good, but you shouldn't go out of your way to lose queens. You shouldn't have to make any concessions. Oh, I played c6. I've already played that today. I'll play g6 this time. Um, yeah, so queen exchange is the, one of the trickiest things in chess, any kind of exchanges, I think. So you should definitely, definitely pause for a minute or two um, before the pawn structure changes or before any pieces come off the board. So, okay. Um, so I've played like a mixture between the Karakhan and the modern here. Um, I know knight f6 is some kind of theory, but I don't really know it. So I'll play this, go to my favorite pawn structure. The bug house pawn structure. So with these four pawns in front of my king, I hope I don't get checkmated later, but you never know. Famous last words. Knight a6. He can take that if he wants. My pawn structure will be ruined, but long term I have the two bishops, which would grant me some dynamic compensation, hopefully. Um, Jackson20 asking what everyone's favorite chess website is. I'm not sure if that's a troll comment. I'm hoping it's chess24. Otherwise, why else would we all would you all be here? Um, chess Twenty Four is my favorite chess website as well. I, like it's the only app I ever really use on my phone um, to follow chess. It's great for following live events, great for videos, content, um, everything really. And as you can tell by my rating, I've played on here a lot as well. So, Chess Twenty Four by mile. Okay, Rookie One. Yeah, I'm never never sure whether Knight wants to go on D Five or E Six here. Maybe I want to stop. Do I want to stop bishop f4? Maybe I want to stop bishop f4. Maybe I'll just play bishop e6 first. Looks like a useful move. Okay, a4. Now I'll play a5 because when I put my knight on d5 now, it's less likely he'll play c4 because he'll he'll uh, let me get an outpost on the b4 square. That being said, he's playing b3, which is a bit odd. Okay, now I'll play knight d5. So c4, knight b4. This is why I, I like this a4, a5 inclusion. Yeah, uh, bishop queen d2. Maybe I should have flicked in bishop h6, get that bishop active. But that's my problem piece at the moment, the bishop on g7. If I can get that into the game, then I'm very happy. So we will see. Yeah, bishop a3. Um, forgot about that one. But now c4, I can't use the b4 square, so I guess I have to go this way. Um, okay, oh, maybe the rook a d8 was simpler, but bishop h6. Try and kick his queen about a bit. Yeah, I'm not sure that's useful at all, actually. Silly. I'm resorting to five-year-old tactics, one-move threats. Um, yeah, actually, it's a really bad idea to play bishop h6, so I'm going to correct that. Pride is a sin, so I'll accept my mistake and go back. Yeah, if I didn't go back, then I risk walking into like bishop b2 and d5 later, and he opens up that diagonal against my king. Yeah, thanks, Iron Math, for the game. Well played. Rook d2, what's his idea? Um, yeah, 
this isn't as fun as some character compositions where you get e takes f6 because the bishop on g7 is just not very good. I mean, it's always tempting to play f5, but it's hard to know when. Okay, let's double on the d file because I think that's what he wants to do. Let's play copycat. Whoa, b4. That's probably just a good move, actually. Yeah. Do I play bishop f8? Maybe bishop f8. Get rid of this problem piece. B2, uh, a takes b4, bishop takes b4. It looks like he's got some threats on the queen side there. So, bishop f8. Yeah, I'm going to have to speed up here. My opponent's playing extremely well. I think I'm just slightly worse. That pawn structure. C5, though. Oof. Oof. It's just not, uh, yeah, generally not a good idea to give your opponent this kind of outpost. I'll take here. Um, probably just rook a8. Yeah, this knight on d5 is beautiful now, but I might exchange it at some point um, because I'm inconsistent. Okay, let's flick in this one just to confuse him. Gain a bit of time now. I'll take ambition d5, remove. Mm. I feel I should be slightly better now somehow, but yeah, it's not easy to improve my position still, which is annoying. Very annoying. Let's get these queens off just because my queen's passive and his is active. I'm hoping that his queenside pawns will be a bit weak and I can pick them off slowly, but it's not the case. And yeah, my opponent played well. Okay, I'm so behind on the clock now. I need to really speed up. Nice force is a good move there. What am I doing? What am I doing? Oh, I can't end on this note. Playing badly and slowly. Yeah, I shouldn't have allowed Nancy 4 I should have just taken on D2. Uh, okay, let's jump in now. I don't know why I did that one. <laughs> the most pointless exchange I've ever played. Uh, yeah, bishop b4, I'm attacking a4. Okay, then. Should I have allowed that? Probably not. Yeah, I forgot about critics b7. Which... Yeah, I could do this. Just about. Queen e3, I have queen f4. Okay, now I think I'm better or winning, but not much time, so it'll be a scramble. Okay. I think I'm winning now. I'll be a few pawns up in this endgame. I've removed the danger as well. I've, um, yeah, pre luckily pre moved. Um, yeah, once I remove all his pawns, I'll manage to block them. Opposite color bishop end games are like the perfect ones for flagging. Cynical, but yeah, there we go. No, thanks for the game, Drummond. Again, you had me on the ropes. Definitely one of those openings where it's like, uh, do not try it at home. Slightly worse. Um, let's see how we're doing for time. Okay, I haven't. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting told that I might have time for one more game. So who's going to be the lucky, the lucky one? Um, okay, I will play Cobra, who's been waiting a long, long time. Here we go. Okay, last game. Let's make it good. Okay, knight of six. Cobra's beaten. Actually, I, I just I see on his profile here. He's beaten me seven times before. Okay, I mean out of two hundred, but still, that's impressive. Um, so, yeah, I've got to be careful here. Double fianchetto, bishops on long diagonals. Let's play it solid, play it safe. Now I'm scared, and Kasparov fan is rooting for Cobra. So, yeah, you've been blacklisted, Kasparov fan. Our friendship is over. Um, play C3. I never know really how to play these positions. Do I play for c5 or do I play for e5? I, I tried both plans in the past. Um, g4, wow. No respect. No respect. <laughs> so he wants to checkmate me. Do I go e5 now? I mean, I have to open the center. I kind of I kind of go c5 and then take on d4 and then go e5 to open things up massively. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it's... Somehow feels unlikely he'll be able to attack me properly. Bishops on g7 are good defenders, and uh, his king is uncastled. I mean, now, yeah, I mean, I don't even want to prepare it. I mean, this e5 move, do I? Okay, I mean, he's asking for punishment. King on e1. <laughs> Kasparov fan, that's right. Uh, I mean, you're probably the first person who's ever said they love me, but um, yeah, someone has to cheer for my opponents. So 
I'll let you off. I'll let you off. Um, Jackson 2020, do I like soccer? Yeah, I love soccer. I actually, I've got it minimized right now. I'm glad I'm not sharing screen, but I've got football manager minimized. It's like just eternally minimized on my computer. Uh, yeah, Bishop G5, rookie eight. Yeah. I like my position, nice and coordinated, everything developed, almost. But then again, yeah, I mean, he's close to casting queenside and running away. So maybe I played a bit slowly. Okay, he's going to cast a queenside for sure, so let's like, prepare some attack. If he plays bishop takes b5, I'll play e takes d4, and let's check. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm being trolled in the chat, but Jackson 2020, you've changed your profile picture to my face, and I don't think that's a flattering picture for anyone. So I'm impressed and flattered, but knight e4, oof, okay. Tactically, I don't think that works, right? I can just take this. And yeah, the problem is he's pinning my knight on f6, but I'm getting two pieces. If he plays queen takes e4 now, I do get two pieces and, he, uh, and the queens come off. And he only gets one piece and the queens come off. So yeah, fortunately, a bit of miscalculation there from Cobra. But if he's beaten me seven times before, he must be very quick. So I'll be careful. Actually, yeah, I'm not. Not sure what the producers will say, but if he resigns now, maybe one more game. We'll see. Not sure. If not, then I'll, I'll pretend that I'm going out on a high, at least. Augustin Toms, yeah, thanks for becoming premium. Um, I hope it wasn't just for the battle blitz. You do get a lot of other perks as a premium member. Lots of great videos out there. Um, not just by Lawrence Trent, but okay, that's a check. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I've just been. Uh, I've just had a nice whisper in my ear saying I can play one more. So okay, I'll try to speed this one up and make this quick. I'm a piece up and about to win a second one. I think. Um, I think. Yeah, I'll win it this way. Rookie four. I'll pretend the next game's a bullet game. Um, Iron Man. Apparently, your your username isn't a, a reference to the Marvel um, character. That's a bit surprising, that. Actually, Thor is my favourite. You know, in my mind, I look like Thor, you know, with the big muscles and the long hair, but I'm going bald and I don't have any muscles, so um, it's just a dream. Captain America is also pretty cool. Okay, thank you for the game, Cobra. One last speed game. Let's do it. Who's been waiting the longest out of everyone? Okay, Bateman. Apparently, we might have played each other before, so this is your chance for revenge. Quick one. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. Exactly, Lubris Revolt, Thor in Endgame. I was gonna say it, but I don't wanna spoil things for people. And Jan, <laughs> Jan's in the chat. Where was my challenge, Jan? I wanted to crush some, I wanted some easy games. But, um, yeah, Jan Gustafsson does remind me that Thor the Dark World, that's, yeah, that was a hard one to love, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I have a lot of love in my heart. So, Thor the Dark World, even that one had its perks, had its uh, moments. Yeah, I'm trying to remember any, but I thought Thor 1 was good. Thor Ragnarok was awesome. Um, and Thor, his development in the Infinity War and Endgame movies was also good. Okay, I'm, play I'm just playing on autopilot here. I'm pretending that I know what I'm doing in the opening, as usual. I think my experiments with the Sicilian in general have all gone wrong. I've got a solid maybe 20% with the Sicilian in the last few years as black. So I tried to use it as a surprise weapon on my banter blitz. I'm sure Bateman, you've been here before, you've been preparing for me. So. As Guardians of the Galaxy, that would be amazing. Um, okay, so Queen H5, he is leaving some stuff a bit loose though. So queen d4 looks tempting. Attacking e5 and c3, double attack. Yes, as guardians of the galaxy. Oh, Bateman, just when things were getting fun. You could have lived on there maybe with king d2. Um, but yeah, thank you for the game, Bateman. And I think I'm going to have to cut things there. I think Pascal is getting ready to 
go with his after show um, of the, for the Magnus Carlsen Invitational. Lots of fun stuff to cover in that show. So definitely stick around for that. I'm going to be sticking around. I'm going to be watching. Thank you for everyone who's joined me today. Again, some close shaves. <laughs> I feel I've done more dirty flagging than ever today, but it's been fun and it's definitely uh, been a good start to the weekend for me at least. So thank you everyone and enjoy your weekends. Bye-bye.